Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal. Today's August 11th, and um, there are no death anniversaries today that I am aware of. So I'm going to address something else. Um, in the wake of Roe falling, um, the abortion lobby has been trying to pretend that um, in states where abortion is criminalized again, that this will mean you can't treat ectopic pregnancies. And pro-life groups have been rushing to reassure women that yes, you can still get life-saving treatment if you have an ectopic pregnancy that's um, in danger of rupturing. However, in all of that, I found out that um, I get the feeling the pro-life movement has really been suckered into kind of abandoning ectopic pregnancy to the abortion rights lobby so that they can have their one case in which those pro-lifers are willing to allow abortion and then kind of leverage that. And even um, the majority of pro-life organizations write off the idea of saving an embryo that has implanted outside the uterus. And I've often wondered, I mean, we open up the womb and do spina bifida surgery. We do all kinds of surgery um, on unborn children. Why don't they ever do anything? Why is there no research to try to save these babies? Because this is a very common cause of um, early uh, death of unborn children. And for a lot of mothers, um, even pro-choice women are devastated by the loss of their baby to an ectopic pregnancy. And I found out that there was a successful transplant of an ectopic pregnancy in the uterus carried to term in 1917. And I'm going to share uh, the link below to the write-up of that. And the, the doctor in 1917 was wondering why we weren't doing this more routinely. Now, at that time, before ultrasounds, these ectopic pregnancies were generally discovered when the doctor was performing some kind of other abdominal surgery, and there'd be a living embryo in the woman's um, fallopian tube. And this is what happened. Um, said um, he was operating for a woman who had a fibroid and discovered that there was an embryo in the uh, fallopian tube. So he very carefully removed the fibroid and then implanted the embryo into the area that had been um, damaged by the removal of the fibroid and there, therefore had a very good blood supply going there. And um, the pregnancy went on normally to full term and resulted in the natural birth of a fine boy, fully developed and without a scar, May 2nd, 1916. So, oh, I'm wrong. It was published in 1917. The surgery was performed in 1915 with the baby delivered in 1916. And this doctor was encouraging doctors to look into this more. And I found that it seems that there's a huge financial disincentive to this because we've simply established even the pro-lifers are going to let you just let the baby die. Um, and I've mentioned before that maybe pro-life women who discover they have an ectopic would like to advocate for saving their baby. And this is something that really... Um, like I said, I think the pro-life movement has been suckered into just surrendering on ectopics um, because we've been so bullied by the abortion rights lobby. You know, they want to paint it as, oh, you don't want to uh, allow women to be to have their lives saved in the case of an ectopic. And we've been rushing in going, yes, you're allowed to save her life. You're allowed to save her life. And we've just been not looking any further than that. So... We need to spread the word among pro-life women that the first successful transplant of an ectopic pregnancy to the uterus where the baby carried the term and was born healthy. Again, the surgery happened in 1915 and the baby was born in 1916. And the doctor back then was saying he doesn't know why this isn't routine 
because there's there's it's it's such low risk to the mother why aren't you at least trying to save these babies pro-lifers we need to stop letting these people sucker us into just giving up on these babies and their moms who don't want their babies to die